1747. Thomas Paine was born in Thetford, Norfolk, England. 1744 to 1749. Paine attended Thetford Grammar School for five years. 1750. At age 13, Payne began work as an apprentice for his father's business as a stay maker, making stay ropes used on the masts of sailing vessels. November 1756. In late 1756, 19-year-old Payne ran away to London and signed up as a ship hand for a naval ship called the Terrible. His father tracked him down in time to persuade him to give up his plans. Britain was engaged in the Seven Years' War with France at the time. Fortunately, Thomas acquiesced. The Terrible would soon thereafter engage in fierce battles against the French and was in the end defeated by a French privateer called Vengeance. The few surviving members of the Terrible's crew were subsequently taken prisoners, a fate which Thomas Paine narrowly escaped thanks to his father's intervention. Instead, Paine set up shop as a staymaker in London. January 1757. Paine joined the crew of the King of Prussia for a six-month stint on the high seas. 1759. At age 22, Paine opened his own staymaking shop in Sandwich, Kent. September 27, 1759. Paine married a local girl named Mary Lambert. 1760. Sadly, Payne's wife Mary died after giving birth to a stillborn child. At the same time, Payne's shop's staymaking business failed. 1762. After moving back to his hometown of Thetford, Payne started work as an excise officer, inspecting shipments arriving by boat and collecting customs duties and taxes. February 11, 1768. Payne moved to Lewis, Sussex for a new position as an excise officer. He moved in as a boarder at the home of a local tobacconist, Samuel Olive. During this time, Payne started taking an interest in politics. March 26, 1771. Married Elizabeth Olive, his landlord's daughter. 1772. Thomas Paine crafted his very first political pamphlet, a 12-page article called The Case of the Officers of Excise, in which he put down all of the complaints of his fellow excise officers and addressed the powers that be for immediate change in their working conditions. One of the chief complaints that Paine leveled was the fact that the average excise officer on patrol only received 50 pounds a year. June of 1774. After he was dismissed from his work as excise officer, Payne and his wife separated. Payne then moved to London, where he first met Benjamin Franklin. Franklin recommended Payne to move to colonial America and supplied him with a letter of recommendation. November 30th, 1774. Thomas Payne arrived in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. 1775. Payne contributed articles to several newspapers and worked as editor for the Pennsylvania Magazine. Payne championed such things as greater rights for the average worker, abolition of slavery, and independence from British rule. January 10, 1776. Common Sense was published. In Common Sense, Payne masterfully presented the argument for American independence in a light that Americans could easily understand and identify with. Signed by an Englishman, this one publication quickly had over 100,000 copies in circulation throughout all 13 American colonies. July 4, 1776. The official Declaration of Independence was issued. December 1776. The American Crisis was published. In The American Crisis, Payne sought to rally the troops and encourage the fight against the British. The pamphlet was read aloud to the Continental Army on December 23, 1776, three days before the Battle of Trenton. February 1781. In 1781, Payne accompanied a delegation to France. The group's objective was to gain a loan from the French in order to help the Americans continue the war effort against the British. The group returned to America in August, having secured a loan of 10 million, as well as a gift of 6 million. In addition to securing these financial infusions, Payne had also networked with several important figures during his time in Paris who aided him in creating the Bank of North America as an ongoing finance arm for the Continental Army. 1787. In France, Payne became involved with prominent Frenchmen such as the Marquis de Lafayette, a general who had participated in the American Revolution. During the next couple of years, Thomas Payne would travel back and forth between Britain and France, consulting with intellectuals on both sides of the Channel. February of 1791. Rights of Man was published. Payne's Rights of Man and its continuation, Rights of Man, Part the Second, Combining Principle and Practice, published in 1792, became a must-read among the working class of Britain. In Rights of Man, Payne defended the French Revolution and the basic civil rights he believed should be bestowed, even going as far as to call Britain an illegitimate government. 1792. Because of his publication of Rights of Man, Payne was indicted for sedition in Britain. He was found guilty in absentia and would not be able to return to Britain again. December 28, 1793. Payne was arrested because of his involvement in the French Revolution. Slated for execution along with countless other victims of France's unrelenting crackdown on subversives, Payne is said to have only very narrowly avoided the guillotine. November 4, 1794. Payne was released from prison. 1794. The Age of Reason is published. Payne's treatise on religion, entitled The Age of Reason, was published in three parts in 1794, 1795, and 1807. In its pain made his beliefs clear by unequivocally stating that all national institutions of churches, whether Jewish, Christian, or Turkish, appear to me no other than human inventions, set up to terrify and enslave mankind and monopolize power and profit. 
1795. As soon as he was released from prison, Payne went back into the fray, and by the summer of 1795, he was allowed back into France's reorganized national convention. The convention sought to draft yet another constitution, and Payne was one of the few to oppose the new draft due to the exclusion of universal suffrage. November 9, 1799. Napoleon Bonaparte, a French general of Italian descent, managed to seize power in France on November 9, 1799. Napoleon was awarded the title of First Consul over the French Republic for ten years. Although Napoleon's role was crafted in language that would make his position seem to be a temporary one, this was actually the beginning of a long dictatorship. 1802. As Napoleon's dictatorship grew more and more oppressive, Payne decided to return to the United States. Payne arrived in Baltimore in 1802, and the timing couldn't have been worse as far as his popularity was concerned among the American people. Payne was despised by religious groups, he was considered suspect for the role he played in the revolution in France, and he was reviled for his attacks on George Washington. June 8, 1809. Aged 72, Thomas Payne passed away in New York City.